Hi everybody, Dan Oman here taking a look at race number six at Assiniboia Downs on Monday, July the 3rd. And it's an allowance race with a $10,000 claiming option. We're going seven and a half furlongs, two turns at Assiniboia Downs. Let's take a look at this field. This race is the third leg of the $1 pick four at the Downs on Monday with a $50,000 guaranteed pool. It is also part of the 20 cent ASD jackpot pick five carryover into the pick five on Monday of over $265,000. Looking at this field, the horse to beat is the number seven X check A who's five to two on the morning line, a perfect two for two since coming up to the downs, a 12 time winner and a horse that just seems to have a lot of guts and versatility. I'm curious to see where our friends at Timeform US have him on the Timeform US pace projector because when I went through this field the first time I didn't see a whole lot of early speed. Timeform US has a horse like the three gallant oak up close to the pace and he has shown the versatility to be close to the pace but personally I think the number four Papa Oscar Whiskey stretching out off a six furlong gate to wire win against conditioned claimers is going to go to the front. Whether he's good enough to handle the class hike as well as stretching out in distance remains to be seen, but to me, I think if he wants the lead, he can get it. Let's start things off with the number one, Browning Island, who made his Downs and Dirt debut in his most recent start on June the 19th. And while he didn't run very well that day, perhaps we could just simply give him a ready-made excuse. He hadn't run in six months. He probably needed the race, and he got wired by a horse that was able to make a pretty easy lead. This is a horse that should have gained a lot of fitness from that performance. He'll obviously have to improve, and he has to prove that he's as good on dirt as he was over the synthetic surface surface when he campaigned at Woodbine earlier in his career. Browning Island also doesn't seem to have a lot of early speed, so if this pace is slow, it could work against him. He's 20 to 1 on the morning line, the 1 Browning Island. The two is Provocative Prince, and this is a horse making his first start off of the layoff. We have not seen him since late October. He has won fresh in the past. You go back to his start of his 2021 season off of a similar layoff, and he was able to win right out of the maiden ranks with a 68 buyer speed figure. So Provocative Prince has shown the ability to run well fresh in the past, and he had an excuse perhaps in his most recent start at Century Mile going a mile. It was a race that didn't have a lot of early pace. 24 and 1 for the opening quarter mile and that $8,000 claimer. And he just sort of ran evenly. The fourth place finisher from that race has come back to run four times. He's won once, has finished second twice, has finished third once with a best buyer top of 67. Provocative Prince is going to have to prove that he can handle the downs. He's going to have to prove that he can handle the layoff, something he's done in the past. I think he's going to show some fresh speed. He's going to be a very big price on the board. The three is Gallant Oak, who's 7 to 2 on the morning line and finished behind behind x -check -A last time out going the mile. This is another horse. He's done well in his two starts at the down since coming up from Turf Paradise. He seems to fit well at this class level. I think it's all about getting the right race flow and trip for Gallant Oak. A horse the time from US believes can be a bit closer to the pace, but just hasn't shown that speed in his first two starts this meet. I think it's important to try to get closer to the pace with Gallant Oak and work out a trip. He's a, a respectable price on the morning line and he certainly fits from a speed figure standpoint. Let's watch the four. Papa Oscar Whiskey's most recent race. It was a condition claimer, a non-winners of two life going three quarters of a mile. But I thought Papa Oscar Whiskey looked very good in this race. He set a legitimate fraction while being pressured, and he just opened up on that field at will to win as a favorite should. He has now won two of his last three starts. He has recency over some of his competition. He has two starts this year at the Downs, but he's now going to have to step up in class. The distance I'm not too worried about. He graduated at a mile at Turf Paradise. It's all about whether he classes up with these horses. He needs a little bit of a buyer boost, which isn't out of the question, considering he's so lightly raced. The number five is Last Renegade, another that finished behind ex -Cheque last time out, but a horse that does have the tactical speed to get right up close to the pace, and that could be key in this spot. He was a winner four starts back and was claimed out of that race, and while he hasn't won for his new barn, he has 
done enough running that makes me think he is in form right now. He has a big price on the morning line, and he's the kind of horse I think that could trip out in here and perhaps get into your exotics at a very big price. The six is Warrior's Map, and Warrior's Map's getting some class relief, and that could just be the key for this horse. He's raced twice this meet, both for the $15,000 option. He ran well his first start at the meet, a 74 buyer speed figure, and if he is able to repeat that number, he's very dangerous in this spot. He did not run as well last time out. He was bet down to 7-2. to two. He didn't fire at all. Now he gets a little bit of a drop in class. He's a horse that hasn't won a lot of races recently, but Warrior's Map, I think, fits at this level, and if he runs again that buyer of two starts back, he's going to be tough. He's going to have to be tough because x -check A is the horse to beat. Let's watch his most recent start. This was a game performance where he beat a couple of these, and he was claimed out of it by Shelly Brown. Uh, he's two for two now at the downs, as I mentioned early on, and he's just very, very game to get up and win this race by a nose. His two buyer speed figures this meet, 65, 69, uh, very, very solid. And they just fit well with the horses he's going up against on Monday. Uh, he's going to have to lug 124 pounds again, but Exchequer, a horse that does have the speed to adapt to any kind of pace scenario. He should be right in the thick of things when the field turns into the stretch. He's 5-2 to two on the line, and is a horse that is worth definite consideration if you're playing the $1 pick four with that $50,000 guaranteed pool. Gone Somewhere completes the field. Let's watch his last race. Open $7,500 claimer going 7 eighths of a mile, and he was able to stay close to the pace that day and then forged clear as the favorite. It was a good effort. He was dropping in class out of this level, where he finished a pretty decent third in his first start off of the claim. I do think he fits. I think 4-1 to one on the morning line against this caliber of competition is a bit light. He was about 37-1 to one when he finished third at this level two starts back, so I would need Gone Somewhere to drift up a little bit in price, but he showed last time out where he's still in form, and he got a confidence boosting win. Let's take a look at my top selection for Monday's race number six at Asinaboya Downs, the third leg of the $1 pick four with a $50,000 guarantee. I'm hoping that the class drop is what the doctor ordered for the number six, Warriors Map. He's not the most prolific winner in the world, but I do think he has enough positional speed to get close to the pace, a pace that shouldn't be very fast, and maybe he can outkick them in the lane. I went six, seven, Three, five, X check A, the seven, the horse to beat. I'll try to beat him with the six. Warriors map. Good luck.